My name is Lorraine Gardner and I work for Glasgow City Council's Early and Effective Intervention Team. I work with young people who have picked up charges by the police um, and try and divert them away from picking up further charges and doing one-to-one -one work and I also deliver and design programmes where I'm working with a group of young people who are offending together. We will do victim awareness sessions with young people, we'll help them write letters of apology or we will do um, full-on restorative conferences where we bring the young person who has committed the offence together with the person who has been harmed with the ultimate goal of giving something back for the harm that they've caused. My name is Emily Cutts and um, I'm part of the Children's Wood and was one of the founding members of the G20 Youth Club. We were getting quite a lot of antisocial behaviour in the wider community. There was reports to police, there was reports on the land, which is the Children's Wood, and the young people were coming and using it, um, but they were being a bit, you know, um, intimidating, um, kind of getting involved in some antisocial behaviour, a bit of violence. So we thought let's try and get to know these young people because this is this is an approach that we'd heard had worked before and find out, you know, what, what's the issue, why they're not just going to be like this for no reason. And we went and hung out in the wood and we got to know who they were and we got to realise there are quite a lot of barriers for this group. Yes, the, their behaviour was not great, but the way everyone else was treating them was not helping the situation, so it was escalating and it wasn't making anything better. A lot of the young people that we work with have a, quite a negative relationship with authority. So when I've ran programmes, I've made it really clear that you know we're trying to remove these barriers so the police don't wear their uniforms, they're all in a plain clothes when they're, they're taking part in the programmes with me. And you really see these young people and the police going on a journey of understanding each other a lot more and we're having lunch together, they're talking about the TV, they're talking about what they did at the weekend, they're learning about each other's lives. It gives them just a moment to humanise each other. To try and change perceptions, because we were getting a lot of stick, we were getting some money, we got some money from the council and people didn't agree with this money being spent maybe with, with this particular group. So what we wanted to do was very early on because we understood about the public, this is a public health, this should be everybody's problem. These are our children, these are our local kids, these are you know our neighbours. What we decided to do was we, we wanted to educate people about maybe some of the barriers for these young people and that they're not just bad kids, you know, there's, there's reasons why they're behaving a particular way. So we got together the local minister, uh, McDonald's came, Tesco, the police, we basically were like, help, these young people need support and we need to, everyone to understand why they need support and then how we can help. A lot of the um, work we do with the programmes, they're causing a lot of issues within their community, vandalising, causing annoyance to retail places, shops and takeaway places. So we get the, the community to feed into our programme so a lot of them will um, offer like food for our programmes for their lunches and we make the young people know that this is what they've done, this is what they're doing for you even though you're done, you've done this to them this is what they're prepared to do because they care about young people and they want to improve those relationships and that's all restorative as well. We've had corporate uh, victims where there's been graffiti on like the wall of Domino's pizza or the pizza shop and um, they've went and painted it with these young people that's really good that they are taking kind of onus of what what they've done and, and trying to kind of kind of make it right so that's that's been really good. Once you understand um, that maybe the young people are experiencing trauma in a, a community level or within the house uh, you can maybe come at the problem from a more empathetic point of view it's not you don't need to excuse necessarily bad behaviour but you can understand and see that the behaviour doesn't reflect who that person is. If we can just get past the behaviour and start to um, show these positives, then maybe we can start to change what people think of them. They take that learning and they use it in other ways, so it's not just about that one individual. They can then see the behaviour that they've done to other people causes harm as well. So if they're causing issues with the kebab shop, then that's they're also causing issues with the, the local 
store or the, the, the pizza shop or the chip shop um, and they'll, they'll stop those. So it, it benefits a wider range of people, not just the, the, the person harmed that you've got in front of them. We've noticed certainly the young people, there's much less violence than there was a few years ago. If you spoke to these young people now and spoke to them two years ago, you would not, even, even a year ago, you wouldn't believe it's the same person. Like they're able to reflect, they're able to control, manage their emotions so that if they don't like something, they don't just kick right off and have a big uh, fight about it. The club's really calm. One young person started a job last week. One quote actually was really powerful from one of our young people who said, people just think I'm a wee bam from Mary Hill, but you guys think I'm something and maybe I could be something. So that sort of hope for the young people, I think, makes them feel, maybe I could do it, you know. And some of them have said, I, I'd be in jail if it wasn't for the club, or, you know, I don't know what I'd do without the club. We're just managing to get people onto a more positive, positive pathway. Every single person that I have done restorative conferences with, with do not regret doing it because they feel that they can draw a line under it and move forward and the person harm feels that they can draw a line under it and move forward. It's an amazing process and I'm a huge fan of restorative justice um, and it should be used wherever it, wherever it can.